We've got this from TimCast.com. Trump roasts DeSantis 2024 presidential campaign announcement. Quote, wow, the DeSantis Twitter launch is a disaster, <laughs> Trump said. <laughs> and uh, we've got a bunch of memes that all of these Trump supporters are posting. Team Trump posted, uh, this is probably one of the, uh, this may be one of the worst ones. Ron with the exclamation point like Jeb. And uh, what is what is this falling over? Is that is that a rocket falling over? Is that... What is that supposed to be? It's, it's like a failure it. to launch. It's supposed to be a rocket that shoots up. And it's oh, I see. Uh, I see. It's, it's yeah. from uh, when Elon Elon's rocket didn't like take off properly. Oh. That, that's what I thought. It looked like yeah, one of their... On yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a deep meme. I it's love cold it. Blooded. I know. It's like a couple layers there. It's cold-blooded. Yeah. It's a jab reference. It's taking down Elon. <laughs> <laughs> so this morning, I was talking about this too because you know it, the, the announcement comes yesterday at 6 p.m. We've now had a full 24 hours plus of media reactions. The media is going nuts. I don't really care. Like, I don't like their opinion to begin with. But you've got the left and the right basically pointing at DeSantis being like, yo, that was really, really bad. Yeah. And there are these DeSantis. I don't know. I don't know. What you, is there was, what's a word for someone who's like a diehard for DeSantis? Whatever. DeSantis. There's no such thing. doesn't exist. Uh, maybe maybe a DeSantis. No, a, I'm inventing it. It's a DeSantis. A DeSantis? Yeah, they're Stans. Oh, DeSantis. DeSantis. Yeah. yeah. Stans. Well, they, they, yeah. they are. And they're, and they're on DeSantis. Twitter. And they're, they're posting this stuff. And it's just like, look, man. That that Ron with the exclamation point really does sum it up a lot. And you were saying this before the show. Yeah. That he could jeb out. Yes. And that's actually my call. I think he's getting ready to flame out like we just saw yesterday. Jeb out. He's doing he's gonna jeb out. Yeah. You know, real quick, and this is this is something that's kinda near and dear to my heart that's really important to me, and that's and that's loyalty. So President Trump has endorsed me the last two cycles. And so when he came out and announced back in November, I was literally he finished like the last syllable, we endorsed him immediately. Because it's really important to me. He helped to get me here. Ron DeSantis would not be the governor of Florida if not for Donald Trump. And so what I'm seeing here is a level of disloyalty I think he's going to pay for ultimately. And that's just not how you treat someone that got you this far. He's 44 years old. He's the governor of the free state of Florida. And by the way, from what I could tell, he's done a pretty good job at it. Yeah. Just being loyal to the person that got you here in the first place. And then you could be the heir apparent for the future. But my fear is that he is being talked into doing this by a lot of other people that are going to make a lot of money. And based on what we saw yesterday, we were kind of talking about it before the show, how he looks like a hostage patient right now. He looks like he's being held hostage to do this. And I think there are a lot of people in Florida that, that simply want him to stay in Florida and be the governor and do the job that they elected him to do. Yeah, this is something that brought up uh, was brought up as we're setting everything up. Well, he's not going to win Florida. For no. two for two reasons. No. People love Trump and a lot of people in Florida who vote for DeSantis probably would choose to vote for Trump. But also the people who really love DeSantis are going to be like, nah, let's keep him here. That's exactly right. You, you said this before the show. They're going to have their cake and eat it, too. They're going to get Trump as the president and DeSantis as their governor. Who would who would I, I would love to have that. And you brought that point up. And I've never I've never, I actually never heard that before. That's absolutely spot on because yeah. I was always looking at it from like a head to head standpoint. But if I were literally a citizen that was living in the free state of Florida and based on the last few years being in basically Florida and Texas where I'm from, I call those the last two free states <laughs> of our union. And, and the idea of the job that he has done as governor, you mean to tell me that I get to have President Trump on top of this ticket and I get to keep DeSantis as my governor? Why in God's name would I not want that? I have I have never heard that point. It's a very salient point too, as well, because it's very simple. I of know you choose that. But we've had tons of people comment on this show. People have called in saying we don't want our governor to leave. That, that's yes, true. yeah. So like, sorry, look, it's he's going to get termed out, but he's got some time left. Plenty you know? of time, in, right? And by the way, <laughs> plenty of time. of time left. No one here mm -hmm. is saying, "Oh, DeSantis is some horrible swamp monster. We hate him. We hope no. Trump destroys him." It's the opposite. I want DeSantis to be successful. I don't think the best possible move for him right now is to leave Florida. I could totally be wrong about that. I'm not making predictions here, but what I am saying is this genuinely comes from a place of saying, all right, there are so few good political leaders in America today that when there is one doing a really good job in Florida and he's got a long career ahead of him, maybe it's not the right time for him to run for president. He would also be, I think, what, the second youngest president or would, hmm. he, would, would that make him the youngest at 44? Second after, after JFK. How old is JFK? I'll look. Was he 42? No, I'll look. No, you won't. <laughs> Let's get that real-time fact check on here. How <laughs> old was JFK uh, when he got elected? My, my computer froze, so Hannah might actually beat me. 
That's not my name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Claire. He was uh, 43 when elected. Oh, yeah. wow. 43. I'd be the second youngest president. Oh, my computer. He's got loaded. time. Right. Yeah, but, you know, uh, I was talking about this this morning. Dude, if, if you're going to sit here and lie to defend DeSantis over his lack of charisma, you'll lose. And if you're going to come out and try and try and defend that he has no charisma with, but his policies are great. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of that Futurama bit where the Amazonian women introduce the men to their <laughs> WNBA and they're like, no can dunk, but good fundamentals. <laughs> it's like, okay, dude, the, the, the being the loud, strong voice is dunking. Mm -hmm. You can be, you can be an all, uh, 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 let's just, let's just equate to basketball. There are tons of really, really great basketball, football yeah. players. Yeah. You'll never remember their names. Mm -hmm. They're really well-rounded. They, they 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 have really great Such stats. A good point. And then there's those those star players that you just know are commanding the massive yeah. salaries. Well, and this is also an important point for people to consider and something that is really lost on people. And this is some it's a mistake I made, by the way, when uh, I was looking at the 2016 election. There were politicians whose policies I liked more than Trump. And so I was saying those people should have gotten the nomination at the time. Now, obviously, Trump grew on me over the years and I really like him now. But at the time, my thoughts were, well, this political leader has better policies. But the reality is a politician is not just a set of policies. Mm -hmm. They're a presence. They're a person. They're a leader. They have to be capable of doing certain things. And one of the things that whoever gets selected by the Republicans to be the nominee has to be able to do is be charismatic enough to win a general election. Now, many people have responded to this by arguing that Joe Biden isn't charismatic. Okay, Joe Biden doesn't have good policies either. What Joe Biden had <laughs> was a support. massive leg up. He had massive institutional support that yeah. no Republican nominee is going to get. So saying Biden, one of the worst candidates of all time, won, so we don't have to be very selective about the level of charisma our candidates have, is not an argument. Because guess what? Whoever ends up winning in 2024, if it's a Republican, Time Magazine isn't going to come out several months from now with an article about how every major institution in the country coalesced to get him elected. When the Democrat nominee is chosen, be it Biden, Time Magazine is going to show a smiling Biden with a light blue background shaking hands. Yeah. And no matter which Republican it is, they're going to superimpose their face on Hitler's body. <laughs> exactly. put swastikas everywhere. Exactly. Exactly. I think charisma does make a difference. I mean, I said this before the show, but... Uh, Every politician, I'm sure you can speak to this, mm -hmm. surround themselves with people who are able to come up with strong policy. It's part of having a always. strong staff. Uh, so they're not always the person who has a, the front of the room. They're not always the person who makes speeches. Chris makes a huge difference. Uh, Ron DeSantis' team just released that they fundraised $8.4 million since his announcement, mm -hmm. since his official launch yesterday. In uh, 2019, Trump raised $24.8 million in the 24 hours after he launched his reelection campaign. Wow. There is such a, a serious um, weight to charisma, to leadership, to persona. And the numbers alone tell us that DeSantis is not it. I mean, again, I think he's talented. I'm happy for him to have a long career. I think we should have a strong, deep uh, bench of politicians who are really willing to lead the country in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But you cannot deny that Donald Trump has something Ron DeSantis does not. You, 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 you say real quick, the fundraising for Trump numbers was that, you said 20... 2019? 2019. When he announced his re-election campaign, $24.8 million in less than Can we look up uh, 2015? Yeah. To see what he raised? I'd be curious. Because you, you, you had a really wide field then. Yeah. I think it what, 17 candidates or whatever. Now right. you've got three or four. So that, 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 that I've actually announced. Yeah. Right, right, right. So I'd, I'd be interested to see. It's hard to do a, a one for you. Can't really do a one for one comparison because the, the total different it's numbers. Different. I'd be willing to bet. The reason I ask though is that in 2015, Trump probably raised a lot of money relative to what you know to the field. Yeah. But then again, I mean, everyone thought Cruz was going to win very early on, yes, right? It, 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 it bounced around. A lot of people are pointing out that uh, at this time in Trump's uh, uh, first campaign, his his polling was way, 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 way down. Yeah. So we will see. But guys, look, I pulled up Barack Obama's announcement from 2000, I think 2007. It was, it was, it was fire. Yeah. It was, it was passion. He's got this massive crowd of people. He does this slow buildup. And that's why I, Barack Obama, am announcing my candidacy and rising the, raising the voice. And everyone, ah. yeah. Ron DeSantis went, well, yeah, I'm running for president to uh, lead the great American comeback. And uh, I'm like, okay. Well, this is another important thing to consider, which is that 
presidential campaign spending has been one of the number one predictors of who gets elected for decades, and Trump actually broke that mold. Broke the mold. The, kit, the Clinton campaign outspent Trump about two to one. And Jeb, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, interesting. In the primaries. Jeb raised way more than he is initially. Absolutely. That, I, I, that makes perfect sense to me, though, right? Because no matter how much money people throw at you, even if, you know, I shouldn't say no matter how much money people throw at you, because we know that if you do have massive capital behind you and all of corporate America's got your back, yeah, you're going to have a higher chance of success. No doubt. But the fact that Trump was able to overcome those odds is really, really incredible. I mean, and I would just encourage everyone to to uh, just quickly look up the charts of campaign spending since the 1960s. You You'll find that basically every single election, the person who outspent won, with the exception of Trump versus Clinton. I, I want to I want to say I want to tell you a quick story about about charisma and what charisma really means. So, uh, a couple of months ago, President Trump came down to Waco, Texas, and did a rally, and I got to speak at the rally. And when Trump showed up to the rally, it was at an airfield. So there were thousands of people waiting in line four or five hours in a day to go to this rally. And do you know how President Trump showed up? In his plane, he does a low pass over the crowd. <laughs> and then, you know the music he starts playing at the rally? Danger Zone. <laughs> uh, but hold on, hold on. Let, let, he, let is me, let an, he is an 80s man. Let, let me finish. 100%. Lands the plane and then taxis around behind the stage where there is a red carpet waiting where he gets off the plane, walks on the red carpet onto the stage. Yep. And is like, I'm here. Yeah. That's the difference between mm. what we saw yesterday and uh, what you will see at a Trump rally. It's like comparing apples to orangutans. It's not even <laughs> close. There, there is a video that Trump put out that shows a flyover with jets. The DeSan uh, the, a pack for DeSantis superimposed jets with fake jet noises flying over DeSantis. <laughs> it's not helping, guys. Like, I know that it wasn't the DeSantis campaign that did that. Yeah. Someone did. And I'm just like, Trump's got the real flyover. Mm -hmm. He was president. Like. You got to know where you can and can't win in, in, in the PR space. But That's correct. No question. I've seen that. The plane pulling up. I think I was in Leesburg. I can't remember. The the, the, the jumbo jet pulling in slowly. Right. Trump walks Trump right out. One. Walks right up to the stage. And there he is. Yes. Afterwards, he walks down to the barricade, starts shaking hands with everybody. Yes. He is he is an 80s man. And he is, he is a charismatic leader. Well, and I just want to throw this out there again. You can be a massive DeSantis fan and still refuse to pretend that the emperor is wearing clothes when he isn't. There's a lot of things to like about DeSantis. It's okay to say that he can work on solving the problem of his lack of charisma. Yeah. We, we, we were mentioning this a moment ago. If they did not give him proper media training, then he's in trouble. He's done. Mm -hmm. If they did, and that was the best they could do, he's done. He's done. So also, I will say this too. Ron DeSantis peaked in November. Mm. Why? It's like been, at a specific moment in November? It's been down after the election in November, after the midterm election where we didn't perform as well. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where DeSantis peaked. And he ended up winning Florida by how much? Like 20, mm -hmm. 23 points. And he yeah. won in Miami and won by this huge margin. Yeah, yeah. And, and even it. back in November, he was still behind the president. And mm -hmm. if you look at the polling, if you look at uh, the, the attraction ever since, it's just been a precipitous fall off we, 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 ever we since November. Right. And he's not getting better. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.